Following Al-Qaeda in Iraq's early embrace of internet technology and broadband video in the early 2000s, the next stage in the evolution of media strategies came in two forms. First, the production of English language media, and second, the full integration into social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook. The first English language production of jihadist media was Inspire magazine published online by Al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula since 2010. In its first five years, 14 issues of this brand-building publication have been released, with each issue focusing on topics ranging from how to build a bomb, how to smuggle explosive devices onto aircraft, to how to join the jihad. It celebrates and calls for lone wolf attacks on Western targets and provides in-depth military analysis of past attacks such as those conducted against the French satire magazine Charlie Hebdo in Paris or the Boston Marathon bombing. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula produced Inspire magazine. Now, that was a big deal because Inspire magazine was, it had great graphics, it, had, it was written in very conversational English, uh, it uh, didn't, it had some, you know, boring theological stuff, but a lot of it was sort of exciting, you know, join the jihad and here's how to build a bomb. And this magazine uh, has been very influential in uh, many terrorism cases around the English-speaking world, um, including the Boston Marathon case where three people were killed. They used, the bomb, they used a bomb recipe that was not dissimilar to the one in Inspire magazine. Around the same time, Anwar al-Avlaki, who was also from Al-Qaeda in Yemen and who was an American citizen, started publishing in English. He ran a blog, a Facebook site, and released regular YouTube videos which caused the Saudi news station Al Arabiya to dub him the Bin Laden of the Internet. He was starting to release videotapes that were also in colloquial American English calling for jihad, and these were much more interesting than Ayman al Zawari's, uh, and they were in English. And that's also a big deal because before that, if you wanted to, often you'd have to get into password protected forums to get this sort of jihadist material. Suddenly now it's in English and you have a, a conversational American English in Inspire magazine, also Anwar al -Laki. The other development that was happening around the same time occurred in Somalia. In 2011, Omar Shafiq Hamami, an American who was affiliated with the Somali terrorist group Al-Shabaab started tweeting. This was the beginning of the wider trend to utilize social media platforms. And Omar Shafiq Hamami and Al-Shabaab were amongst the first groups to do this systematically. Sort of significant terrorists to be tweeting regularly, also in English, and he had quite a number of followers, including people in the counterterrorism community who were interested in hearing what he had to say. And uh, it was Shabab who really used, started using Twitter. So the first major terrorist attack in history that was covered in real time on Twitter was the Westgate Mall attack in 2013 in Kenya. And somebody in, who was fairly inside Shabab uh, was tweeting details about the attack that were actually more reliable than what the Kenyan government was saying, which is admittedly a pretty low bar, but the there was somebody live tweeting the attack who could, you know, who was explaining real details about the attack that only somebody who was involved in the planning or, or knew the people would have known. Releasing news in English rather than Arabic, publishing well-designed magazines like Inspire, and embracing social media like Facebook and Twitter to disseminate footage of attacks in real time, became the trademark of jihadist groups such as Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab after 2010. This signaled a new development in how these groups increasingly used digital new media as a soft power weapon. They became early adapters of these new technologies. Technologies that enabled them to produce and disseminate their campaigns in ways that made them independent of traditional media.
And that allowed them to reach their target audiences around the globe in ways that were historically unprecedented. But this development only foreshadowed what we then came to see in full force with the rise of the Islamic State.